and today inshallah we'll be doing uh, neuropathology practice questions the way this is going to work is i'm going to show you guys a question i'm going to wait for like a couple of seconds for you guys to answer and then i'll show the answer and I'll explain why that's the answer and the others are not the answer if you have any questions or anything send on the chat on mute ask me whatever you want so um, let's start the first lecture is going to be the uh, peripheral nerve injuries i think yeah so this is question one so a 40 year, 41 year old man had influenza like symptoms uh, for four days. Uh, after four days, he had progressive ascending motor neuron weakness. Uh, he then, uh, he started requiring mechanical ventilation on physical exam, blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, lymphocytic infiltrates were seen in peripheral nerves along with segmental demyelination. Uh, what do you think the answer is? Answer in the chat or on mute. Okay. Hello. A, B, C, D, E. Okay. Everyone else? Do you want to answer? Okay, so it's B. So why is it guillain -Barre? So first of all, he has influenza-like symptoms for one week. So it, it was it's an infection. And after that, he had ascending motor weakness, which is also something related to guillain -Barre. And he required mechanical ventilation. So that's three very important things in guillain -Barre. As you can see here, it's a demyelinating neuropathy. So he has segmental demyelination here. There's lymphocytic infiltrates, as you can see here in the picture. And it's often preceded by infection, uh, specifically by Campylobacter duodeni, or uh, mycoplasma or CMV, but uh, Campylobacter is the most common one. Okay, next question. A 63-year-old man has been receiving hemodialysis for chronic renal failure and uh, has noted increasing loss of sensation in his legs for the past four years. On physical examination, there is symmetric decreased sensation over both lower extremities. He has no decrease in strength or abnormality of gait. This is supposed to be gait. Uh, what, is the most like, what is most likely to produce these findings? Hello. What's the answer? A, B, C, or D? Guys, someone said D. Anyone else? Okay, so yeah, the answer is D. Uh, why do you say it's D? It's because he's been receiving hemodialysis for chronic neuropathy, which is probably diabetic nephropathy. And then there's also loss of sensation as, as, as you can see. In uh, diabetes, there is symmetric loss of sense of uh, of sensory and motor neuropathy. So basically, it says here it's on both legs, so that's symmetric. Uh, he also has the dialysis, which is probably diabetes. It's not cam it's not uh, Guillain Barre because Guillain Barre is ascending and motor, and it's not cerebral infarction because that would present as motor as well, and it's not astrocytoma. Type okay. Uh. You saw the answer, Lord. <laughs> Which of the following is the most common acute demyelinating polyneuropathy? A, B, C, or D? Okay. More people want to answer. Someone said A. <sighs> okay, so it is A. As you can see here, it's this, this is a slide from your guys' lecture. It says the incidence of GBS, is the, uh, which is the most common demyelinating point in your So it's purely recall. Most of the uh, patho lectures for this, for neuro, for, for the premature neuro are recalled. So like it's like facts written in the slides, and you're going to have to recall it. All, almost all the questions are like that. So yeah, so, this question. A 45-year-old man got into a motor vehicle accident, which resulted in weakness in his right arm. Microscopic examination of his nerves showed proximal transection of the nerve and center, uh, center, central chromatolysis. Which of the following is most likely a mechanism of his injury? Okay. One person said A. What do the other people think? A, B, C, or D? So, okay, it is A. But what, what part of the, of the question made you like think it's A directly? So there is a phrase or two phrases in this sentence, in this question that are specific for for A. Yes, 
proximal. So the proximal transaction is very important. Like it's the only there. There are four types. Uh, there's a slide. There's a there's a slide in your lecture. There are four types. There's uh there's the Wallerian degeneration, which is proximal. There is distal axonopathy, which is distal transaction, and then uh segmental demyelination. It's just the uh, loss of myelin sheets, like like segment. So it's not continuous. So parts of it is lost, and the rest is still there. So yeah, Wallerian is proximal transaction. Like, next question. A 50-year-old woman came to your clinic complaining of ascending paralysis. The nerve biopsy showed peri perivenular lymphocytosis, which is shown in the image here. Which of the following is the most probable mechanism? Okay. What do you guys think? Write in the chat or unmute whatever you want. Someone said B. Yes, it is B. So what? What is the disease? What's the sorry? It is segmental demyelination. But what's the disease? Do you guys have any idea? The ascending paralysis should give you the hint on what disease it is. Yes, it is GBS. So you can see here from this picture the peri perivenular uh, lymphocytosis, and because it's ascending, so that those two things should give you clues on the disease and the mechanism. Actually, okay. So we finished the first lecture. Do you guys have any question? Even if I didn't mention it here, do you guys have any questions for that lecture? If you do, unmute or text in the chat, and I'll explain it for you guys. If not, we can move on to the second lecture. All good. So okay. So this question, this is the second lecture, which is the lecture by Dr. Shoka, I think. Yeah. So a 27-year-old male is partying with his friends and snorts cocaine. Shortly thereafter, he becomes unresponsive on the couch. Fortunately, his friends called 911, and the EMTs arrive within minutes. Resuscitation is started. But a pulse is not restored until they arrive at the emergency room approximately 20 minutes after he was unresponsive. 20 minutes is very important here. He does not regain consciousness, and one day later, he is pronounced that also one day later is important here. Uh, an autopsy is performed by a forensic pathologist. Which of the following changes will be identified in the hippocampus? What do you guys think? A, B, C, D, or E? Someone said, does hyper, hypertrophic neuropathy always occur after recovery of a nerve? He's talking about the previous lecture, so. No, it doesn't always occur. Sometimes it can happen. You're talking about the traumatic uh, neuroma, I think, so. Yeah, it doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes it does happen, which and, and it results in the formation of a traumatic neuroma. Okay, so what do you guys think of this question? A, B, C, D, or E? Someone said B. Anyone else? There is a lot, there's a couple of people here, so I want more answers. Two people said B. Come on. Okay, yeah, it is B. Why is it B? It's because it's uh, one day later. So the first day you you see red neurons, after there's a hypoxic uh, injury, and uh, uh, snorting cocaine causes vasoconstriction. Should so there is uh, so he lost uh, he does ischemic damage to the brain. So in the first day there is uh, red neurons or those stuff. So there's shrinking of the cell body hypnosis, experience of nucleus. So always pay attention at the timings they put because they all they usually love to ask questions like that. Like they put like they write a whole. A uh, long question, and they write just one word that is, that gives you the exact answer. Uh, there's another question like that where there's like a whole paragraph, and the the, the question is just the last two words. I'll show it to you guys when you reach it. Okay. Second question: Which of the following is the most common cause of diffuse axonal injury? A, B, C, D, or E? 
Yes, it is B. It's this is just recall. It's from you can see it here. It results from trauma, uh, vehicle accident are the most common cause. So acceleration, deceleration. So you're accelerating really quickly and then you decelerate. So and then there's exon injury. Pretty straightforward. Do you guys have any questions? Is it clear? Do I move on? So, so this is the question I was telling you guys about. It's a big question, but you only need one word for it for the answer. So usually what I would say, you guys, if you see a really long question, just read the last sentence. The question is probably going to be there. So what do you think the answer is? Yes, it is D. So microglia, uh, no, it's D. Microglia are basically the macrophages of the uh, of the CNS. As you can see here, they're they're fixed macrophages in the CNS. So whenever a question asks you about phagocytosis in the CNS, it's microglial cells. All good. Clear. Tamam. Next question. Which of the following indicates long-standing gliosis? A, B, C, or D? Yes, this C. You can see here, uh, rosanthal fibers, so basically they're like pinkish fibers, they're thick fibers, and you see them in like, if there's, it's in two, in two things you see them. You see them if there is a long-standing gliosis, uh, or in some tumors, we'll reach that point when we talk about the third lecture. Good. Um, I have a question. Yes. So what's the difference between uh, rostral fibers, or like this one, and the gemmanocytes, uh, astrocytes, the one before it, like the slide before this one? Let me open the slides one second. Um... I think what it is, is that, uh, I'm just trying to make sure, and it's the same thing you're talking about, yes. So, uh, the rosanthal fibers are basically pro like stuff, or like, uh, they're structures that are inside the process of an astrocyte. So an astrocyte looks like a cell with a lot of process coming out of it. So when there is a long-standing uh, like gliosis, uh, those fibers thicken and they become eosinophilic, for, so becoming they become something called rosanthal fibers. Uh, Geminocytic, uh, 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 gametocytic astrocytes uh, also happen in long, in long stand, like in infarct and stuff like that. But they're talking about the entire uh, astrocyte. So the astrocyte becomes the whole the, the cell body of the astrocyte becomes bigger, forming uh, gametocytic astrocytes. Wait, I'll share the screen for of the slide so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, So this is the astrocyte you're talking about. The whole thing, the whole astrocyte becomes bigger. So it's not just the process becoming bigger. If the, it's just the processes, so they look like strands, then that's uh, residential fibers. If the whole thing is getting bigger, then it's the gametocytic astrocyte. Clear? Good? Yes, thank you. Share screen. Next question. So astrocytes are defined by immunohistochemical staining of which of the following? A, B, C, D, or E? Yes, so. Any more people want to answer? Yalla. It's a pretty easy question, Yalla. It's just recall. I just used the whole word instead of the abbreviation. So yes, sah, it's B. It's GF, GFAP, or GFA, GFAP. So this is very important in like uh, identifying astrocytes or even astrocytomas. So 
they'll tell you guys, you know, there's a tumor that's GFAP positive. Immediately just choose astrocytomas because it's the only thing that has GFAP. We'll reach to that point when you go talk about that. So, a patient lost his consciousness and had to stop. It has, it has a stop in pulsation for 30 minutes. A biopsy of the cortex is shown. Which of the following is the cause? A, B, C, or D. Uh, CD68, I'll get to it. One second. Let's first let's finish the question. So what, first of all, what, what's the picture? What does the picture show? What type of neurons are these? They have a specific name. Yes, so, so the red neurons. And the red neurons appear after there is loss of uh, oxygenation or ischemic injury to the brain. So they said there's stop of pulsation for 30 minutes. So yes, it is ischemic neuron damage. Uh, uh, CD68 is for microglia cells. So it's a marker for microglia cells. I think, if I'm not mistaken. Let me make sure. Yes, so microglia cells have CD68. So if they say CD68 positive, then they're talking about microglia. So, do you guys have any questions about this lecture? Because now we'll move on to the CNS tumor lecture. All good? So, okay. So this is the first question for the CNS tumor section. So a 55-year-old 50, man has experienced headaches for the first time in his life, beginning two months ago. He comes to the emergency department following a generalized tonic-clonic seizure. On examination, he has weakness on his left side. An MRI of the brain shows a large, Regular six centimeter mass in the centrum of a, in the centrum semi ovale of the right cerebral hemisphere that extends over the corpus callosum. This is very important. A stereotactic biopsy of the mass is done, and a microscopic and a microscopic uh, and microscopically shows pleomorphic cells positive for GFAP. Uh, molecular analysis shows a normality of TP53 and uh, PDGF alpha. Which of the following neoplasms does he most likely have? So A, B, C, D, or E. Okay, one person said E. Anyone else want to answer? Okay, so it is B. Very, two, two very important things are in this question that lead you to be. The first thing is that it's GFA positive, so it's a type of astrocyte, astrocytoma. The second thing is that it extends over the corpus callosum. So the only one that, like whenever they say this, that means it's, they're talking about glioblastoma, which has the whole, the butterfly appearance. I'll show you guys. Okay. This table is very, 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 very important. Like they can ask about any single thing in this table. So they can ask you about mutations, they can ask you about age, they can ask you about uh, the location, so cerebral, cerebellar, and the and there's like the part that has, yeah, this thing. It has a butterfly appearance across the midline, the glioblastoma. It's like, oh, there's a picture here later on. All clear? Okay. So, next question. A 45-year-old woman has unilateral, unilateral headaches on the right for the past five months. Physical examinations has no remarkable findings. Uh, the representative gross appearance of the lesions seen on CT of the head is shown in the figure. The mass is surgically removed and microscopic examination shows elongated cells with pale oblong nuclei and pink cytoplasm with occasional samoma bodies. This is very important. Uh, cytogenic analysis so shows uh, 22Q deletion. What's the most likely diagnosis? Yes, see. So even if, they, if you guys didn't get the picture, which clearly shows a meningioma, you have to know that Samoa bodies immediately like are for meningiomas. Hello, there's a picture of the Samoa bodies in another question later on. But they're basically like large circles within the, the histology. So, and there's also the chromosome deletion. You can see loss of chromosome 22 is most common. So they can ask you about any of these stuff. You know?
procedure. A 50-year-old man presents to the emergency room after suffering an epileptic seizure. Vital signs are normal. An X-ray shows a mass in the left cerebral hemisphere with scattered foci of calcification. This is calcification is the important word here. Physiological examination of the brain biopsy is shown in the image. Yes. It's only good This picture was not in your guys' slide, but you should like get used to getting like seeing stuff that are not in the slides. So just no, no, it's very, very small cells with like halos around it, and there's calcifications consistently. So they might get to stuff that are not in the in your slides, but uh, but they, they usually look similar to what's in the slides. So this is the picture that you guys have in the slide. Those are the classifications, and you can see the halos around it. Uh, Next question. A 50 year old man presents with a five month history of severe headaches. Vital signs in CBC are normal. Imaging demonstrate a, fourth, a mass in the fourth ventricle. This is very important. And hydrocephalus. The, the results of a CT guided biopsy are shown in the image, which is the following is the appropriate diagnosis. Yes, it's a pandemoma. So, why, do you why, why do you think? Uh, the fourth ventricle and hydrocephalus is important in case of ependymoma. Like, why does it need use of an ependymoma? Like, what's so special about ependymomas? Yes, so basically, uh, ependymomas are because of uh, ependymal cells, which line the fourth ventricle. So if there's an ependymoma, basically that cell becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, so they block the fourth ventricle causing the hydrocephalus. And like microscopically, you're gonna see uh, rosettes here. And within the rosettes, there's a canal. So there are, two, there are two types of cancers that have rosettes or basically cells going around something. But one of them has a canal, which is the uh, pendimoma, and the other doesn't. Hello, we could have a question on that. Next question. A 68-year-old man presents with a two-week history of tonic clonic seizures that initially involved his left arm, but more recently progressed to his left leg. The seizures are accompanied by muscle weakness, uh, muscle weakness, but no other neurological signs. The cranial nerves are intact, and Babinski sign is present. Uh, a CT scan reveals a mass in the left cerebral hemisphere, which crossed the midline. So, uh, a left front of, uh, left front, blah, 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 is performed. Histological examination of the brain biopsy is shown. So, what do you guys think? First of all, do you guys know what this pattern is called? That the butterfly is what you see on like the gross anatomy. Yes, it's serpentine necrosis. So, this type of necrosis, the community should tell you that this is cleaving the stomach butterfly. And you can see it here, command in the slides. So it's a different picture, but it's like the same pattern of the process. Any questions? No? Okay. Next question. A 13-year-old child is brought to the emergency room by EMTs because he had a seizure during breakfast, which was witnessed and reported by his parents. A CT scan of the head reveals the mass in the left cerebral hemisphere, which subsequently, uh, which which is subsequently excised by a neurosurgeon, a pathologist identifies uh, numerous resent, numerous resentful fibers and notes that the tumor is GFA positive. Which of the following is, is, is another feature of the tumor? So resentful fibers and GFA positive. Yes, so, so it's an astrocytoma, so it's derived from astrocytes. So three things should you need an astrocytoma. First of all, it's a young child, and they're more common in young children. Uh, there's resentful fibers and GFAP. So those are only, stuff only seen with astrocytes. So you can see here, there's resentful fibers, which are those things, stuff, and they're GFAP positive. So the immunohistochemical staining is GFAP, and they're positive for it. Here. This is the final question. 
those are stuff I told you guys you'll see later on. So which of the following is correctly labeled? So first picture is which one? Second is which one? Third is which? Okay, we are saying C. Yes, it is C. So in meningiomas, you have some moma bodies, which are those circles. They're only present in it. So if you see it directly in meningioma, in medulloblastoma and ependymoma, both of, both of them have rosettes, which are cells around this thing. The only difference between them is that in ependymoma, I told you guys, there's like a canal in the middle of it. But in medulloblastoma, it does not have a canal. So you can see here, those are the same bodies in meningioma. Medulloblastomas, you have rosette formation, but there's no canal. Here you have rosette formations, but there's also a canal. Clear? All good? Any questions? Okay. That's all the questions that I have. The lectures are... Like the, those, the, especially the first two lectures are very, very like easy and straightforward. They only get you guys like recall stuff. Uh, the last lecture, which is the uh, CMS tumors lecture, I would say for all of them, so, solve uh, Robbins, but I would say for that lecture specifically, solve Robbins because their questions are really, really good and their explanations are very really good. Loyal stuff, Salah, I tried to make like I tried, to, there are a couple of questions that I made here, I didn't get them from anywhere. I tried to find as many loyal stuff as I can. There isn't really that much. The first lecture about the, the whole the, the, the learning degeneration and GPS and stuff, the loyal stuff they can get you is like, which of the following is the most common type or stuff like that. Or like, uh, like the, 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 there was one that's, one second. There's one thing that they might get to you guys, which is, I'll share the screen for that lecture. The peripheral neuropathies. There isn't really much loyal stuff, but they can get you stuff in the horn. So horn, this stuff like you guys know, so the Schwann cells are for the PNS, so oligodendritic uh, glial cells are for the CNS. Uh, they might get you a picture of this and like and remove the, like remove the words and say which one is the following. You need to know that, for example, atrophy is caused by the distal uh, axonopathy and valerian, but segmental doesn't cause atrophy. Uh, here you need to know, know trauma causes valerian. It can cause traumatic neuroma when it's healing. Uh, there's central chromat uh, chromatolysis, which is this. So there's not really low yield stuff. Distal axonopathy, this is the stuff they might ask you. Stocking glove sensory loss and is the root of the following. Or like dying back because the injury is distally and goes back. Uh, for segmental, segmental they probably get with GBS because it's the only example that was explained really well. Epidemiology, they might say most common genetic disease is Charcot Marie Tooth. Most common demyelinating is GBS. Uh, Horn, I don't think there's anything you need to know. Uh, exonal is those look, like it's pretty strict. Like, exonal is the three stuff that are there two stuff, sorry, the valerian and distal. Then there is the demyelinating, which is GBS. Uh, you need to know in the exonal, there is low action potentials because you're cutting the nerve, but demyelination, there's slow conduction because conduction is still there, but because the myelin sheet is speeded up, if it's gone, then it's slower. Uh, for approach, no mono is for is, is vascular. I don't think I'm gonna ask you because yeah, no mono or poly. But just any okay, oh yeah, this is important. You know, GBS is acute ascending uh, motor loss. So okay, this this is important. The acute is GBS. Other than that, I don't think it can ask you stuff from here. Um this I don't think it ask you from here, but this is important to know. You know, small axon is pain and temperature sensation. Large is weakness. 
هون I don't think you have to memorize all of this stuff. كمان here uh, inherited with trifid Mary tooth, same thing as in the epidemiology side. Uh, هون I don't think so. Diagnosis from the cerebral nerve, they might ask a picture. For diabetes, no, no, it's symmetric, so on both sides, and there's sensory loss. So they'll probably say tingling sensation or uh, sensory loss in both feet, stuff like that. So that's like the question I guess I showed you guys. And they'll show you, and there's a chronic disease somewhere, so uh, renal dialysis, stuff like that for diabetes. For polyarthritis nodosa, Salah, I don't think they'll ask it, but no, no, there's fibrinoid necrosis here, which is this thing. Uh, GBS, they're probably going to ask you for it from GBS. No, it's acute demyelinating caused by infection. Uh, it's ascending, stuff like that. So that's from this lecture. Uh, from the lecture to Dr. Shavkat, which is this one. Uh, they'll ask you probably about GFAP. Uh, know that neutrophil is this the, the, the meshwork behind glial cells and neurons differentiate between them, but they, they probably won't ask you to identify them here, but maybe. Uh, this is just like an introduction to the lecture, so there's nothing really important from here. This is this is the this is the most important part, like the timing. So from twelve to twenty four, there's acute injury causing red neurons causing this stuff. But oh, there's the inclusions which are this ones here. So they might ask you, in the Louis body is where Louis body is in Parkinson's, and uh, neurofibrillary tangles it, it's in Alzheimer's. So this is this might be like something low yield they might ask you. Um, this, I think this is important. And in, in the physics of issues, you have spheroids, which is those stuff. They might get you a picture of this and ask you, what, what do you see here in the spheroids or what type of injury the physics is on it? Uh, Wallerian, there's a whole lecture on it. Cell body enlargement and routing. Uh, the the uh, chro uh, chromatolysis is, is very important, come on. Uh, yeah. For gliosis, and no, again, GFAP is very important. Uh, no, no, astrocytes undergo both hypertrophy and hyperplasia, which is seen here. Uh, the nucleus enlarges from blah, blah, blah. So, there's, they won't ask it it's about one point, so no, no, nucleus enlarges, but just no, and no, all of these stuff happen in astrogliosis. Uh, this is very important. You know, astrogliosis is important for repair and scar formation. We got a question about this in our final, I think. So they're probably going to ask you about this. Uh, most numerous command is important. Uh, yeah. This is the gametocystic astrocytes, so they're bigger and stuff. So they're hypertrophy, hyperplasia. Uh, I don't think there's anything else here. Residential fibers are very important, both for this lecture and for the uh, tumors lecture. And you know, it's for long-standing gliosis and those pink stuff. Command GFA positive. Uh, microglia, just know and know they are the macrophages of the CNS and they're positive for the C68 marker. Uh, and they form foci of, necro of necrosis called microglial nodules. So that's that's pretty much it about the microglia. Uh, this is the same thing as the first slide, the red neurons, but it's telling you the entire thing. So the first changes for 12 to 24, you see that red neurons. Uh, 24 hours to six to two weeks, you in there's infiltration. And after two weeks, there is removal of necrotic tissue and there's gliosis, which is here in the middle. Uh, also remember the, like the timing. So 12 to 24, 24 to two weeks and after two weeks, because they can just get you a picture of this and tell you, you no. Know, is this 12 to 24 or is it 24 to two weeks? Uh, just differentiate between vasogenic and cytotoxic edema. I don't think they're going to ask actually, because like, there's more important stuff in the lecture. But yeah, I just understand this.
and if there's toxins, it's cytotoxic. If there's uh, blood brain barrier dysfunction, it's vasogenic. Because the, uh, what, the reason I'm saying it's so that they won't explain that much is because after in the post midterm lecture, it's going to be explained more and how it looks on CT and stuff like that. Uh, and then that's it for this lecture. And then finally, for the CNS tumors lectures, uh, focus on the uh, the, hist the histology, the histopathology. It's very important. They're going to get you pictures of histopathology like here. Can one focus on like the origin of the cells? So, for example, if it's an astrocytoma, it's astrocytes, so it's GFAP positive. You can see a uh, residental fibers. If it's an ependymoma, it's from ependymal cells, so it's places that have the like the, the fourth ventricle and stuff like that. Uh, also focus on the genes. They're very, very important. You can ask you a question and just have the gene there and like you have to figure it out from there. And also the last thing, and focus on the, uh, like in the histopathology, each one of them has a specific thing, like a somoma bodies, classification, stuff like that. So yeah, I think that's, that's, that's pretty much it for the pathology. I think this is like the, the pathology, this for those three lectures is very easy. Best in the practice them, solve problems, it's very, very important. Oh yeah. If you guys have any, any questions about these, feel free to like, Email me or text me on WhatsApp, whatever, and I'll respond to you guys. That's it.